This week on Battle of the Ports, we are taking a look at a classic Falcom action platform RPG. This is Popful Mail, which first hit NEC's PC-8801 on December 20th, 1991. At the start of the game, the only playable character is Mail. However, as the game progresses, Tat and Gua will be available and the player may switch between them at any time through the use of the character option in the menu. Each character has different attacks, armors, as well as differences in walking speed and jump. Mail is the fastest character, but is the one whose jump is the lowest. Tat is balanced, slower than Mail, but faster than Gua, and his jump is similarly in between. Gua is the slowest of the three, but his jump and attacks are usually the highest. As well as an energy bar, or life meter, your character also has a distance weapon or a magical attack bar. This can't be used at the beginning of the game, but later on you will gain new abilities. Each character can also equip up to 5 different weapons and various items. Each subsequent weapon is stronger than the preceding one, although you switch to any weapons possessed at any time if so desired. Throughout the game you'll also come across stores enabling you to buy goods, such as fruit to replenish life, or extra weapons. Popful Mail also has a practical save game feature, well besides the Super Famicom version. During any normal area of gameplay, just call up your menu and save. The next time you die or continue, you will begin the game from your last save spot. For the time and hardware it was running on, Popful Mail was indeed a very nice title. Even now in 2021, it is still a great title for those classic Japanese gaming kicks. On May 22, 1992, NEC fans got the first port of Potful Mail to the PC-9801. This is quite a big improvement upon the PC-8801 original, despite coming out basically half a year later. The game is now much more colourful, runs at a higher resolution allowing for more defined graphics, and now moves a little smoother, but I wouldn't really say it was smooth. Besides the visual upgrades, the gameplay has also been tweaked somewhat, with little map changes here and there. The main play mechanic is still the same mind you, running into enemies to attack them, but here it seems to work a little smoother. I like the new hood, which shows which enemies you are attacking in the bottom right corner and the faster response that the controls have. I also appreciate the little tweaks made to allow entering doors less of a chore. Now our heroine kind of snaps into place if she is close enough to a door or ladder. On the original, you had to be perfectly lined up, which was a pain at times. So yeah, overall this is a much nicer version of an already good game. Things can only get better from this point onwards. Or do they? The next port was to a console and a Sega console at that, 
the Mega CD received a port on April 1st, 1994. This port was done by Sega and they've added quite a lot to the game, including this wonderful fully Mega CD powered introduction. The beauty of that is that it is really clean, unlike games that use full motion video. The game is now fully voice driven, but thankfully these can be switched off, which is a real blessing in this US version by Working Designs. I'm not a fan of Working Design translations at all. Still, let's not get off topic. As you may have noticed, this port features a real attack, so it plays more like a traditional platform action game. The controls of Mail though are a little slippery. They also have a bit of a floaty feel to them. At first it doesn't quite feel right, but you soon get the hang of the new feel. The audio is mostly powered by the Mega CD, so no need to worry about tracks fading out mid-level, and the quality of it is really nice. As are the new redrawn graphics, which make good use of the Mega Drive's limited colour capabilities. All in all, this is a good port, but try to go for the Japanese version, because Working Designs made several changes and adjustments for this North American Sega CD release. Enemies were made more difficult, down sampling and variable bit rates were used to compress the game's sound from a full 44.1 kHz CD quality to fit the game on a disc. And I really do not appreciate the humour. It is vastly different from the original. Oh, and the wonderful voice talents of Megumi Hayashibara are missing, obviously. By the way, some interesting trivia. Sega were actually planning to reskin Popful Mail on the Mega CD into a Sonic based game called Sister Sonic. Thankfully, Sega listened to the Japanese fans and left it as it was. Falcom themselves made a remake of Popful Mail for the Super Famicom, which hit Japanese stores on June 10th, 1994. This version of the game looks very different, but you will recognise areas as they are all based upon the original game. The story however is quite different, and also was the basis of many drama CDs which followed. The gameplay is similar to that of the Mega CD game, however now you need to get really close to enemies to actually deal some damage. Mail doesn't seem to have any reach. There's no game over either. When you die you just respawn back at the nearest checkpoint. This is a bummer though, as any items you use remain missing until you finally get some money to buy them again. Overall this is my least favourite version of the game. August 12, 1994 saw another console release, but this time for the PC Engine CD. The basic layout of the game is the same as the other versions before the Super Famicom release, but the visual scenes have been revised and two new map scenarios have been added. However the opening isn't even close to the quality found on the Mega CD, and the extra areas are not that much fun. This port does support arcade cards though, 
and it is possible to speed up the loading of the visual scenes by using an arcade card. Sadly, as you can see, the visuals are not very appealing, after looking at the Super Famicom and certainly the Mega CD versions. It also plays like the computer versions, in where you walk into enemies to attack them. Why did Falcom go back to this style? It kinda ruins the gameplay. Audio is also a bit of a problem, with voice samples being low bitrate and quite harsh. The music is CD Redbook audio, but that means it fades out during play, then starts up again. Again, another down point compared to the Mega CD. The PC Engine can do better, however, I guess Falcom just weren't interested in pushing the hardware. <laughs> Let's take a look at all those versions of Popful Mail running side by side. <laughs> 